Hey, everybody, we are going to be diving into one of my favorite real estate stocks, Digital Realty Trust, today. Uh, we're going to do a bull versus bear. I just told you it was my one of my favorites, so I bet you can bet, can, can figure out which of the two of us are the bear between Tyler and I. Uh, before we dive in, please take a minute, click subscribe to my channel, and check out the link you see on your screen for a message from The Motley Fool. They're our sponsor, and it's the best way to support this work we're doing. So I'm a big fan of data center REITs right now, uh, more so than I was a year ago. Uh, if you recall about a year ago, Jim Chanos, the notable short seller who called the Enron collapse, came out and said that the data center REITs were his big new big short idea. Uh, he had a few good points in his thesis, but he didn't really anticipate the AI revolution, for one, um, which has proven to be a pretty big catalyst as companies are really spending heavily on AI. And as such, digital realty has rebounded pretty substantially from the lows. Um, it's one of the biggest uh, data center operators in the world. I think it's number two to Equinix right now. Um, but the recent numbers haven't been fantastic. And I'm pretty sure that has something to do with Tyler's bear thesis, right? Just a little bit. And, I, you know, we agree on a lot of things, but there's probably like a half a dozen stocks that you and I probably vociferously disagree with. And I think digital realty is one of those like real points of contention. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I mean, I, I'll go through some of the reasons I'm a big fan right now. I mean, in addition to the AI investment that's, you know, going to go on over the next decade or so, let's say that Jim Chanos is right. And that a, a lot of data center spending, a lot of that AI spending goes to the three big tech players and and not necessarily to digital realty and, and its and its peers. Uh, for one, I'm pretty sure you're going to mention the balance sheet when you talk about why you're not a big fan uh, but it is improving. Uh, they're doing a great job of getting debt under control. Their debt to EBITDA ratio dropped from 7.1 times uh, to the, in the first quarter of 2023 to 6.2 as of the third quarter. And I really think it could be a big beneficiary of lower rates and even more so than REITs in general. Generally speaking, REITs are very rate sensitive. Um, for one, they're yield-based investments, which tend to come under pressure when rates rise and tend to do well when rates fall. Cost of capital is another issue. We know that digital realty, I mean, they do have a debt issue and they rely a lot on borrowed money. So cost of capital is a big part of the equation. That improves when rates drop. And even more than other REITs, they depend on the ability of the tech industry to spend money, um, which is a very rate sensitive issue. Um, a lot of these gr fast growing tech companies only borrow money if it's feasible to do so and if it's cheap to do so. So I think you're going to see a wave of tech investment that kind of picks up as rates fall, which could be a big positive for data center REITs. I like some of the new projects they're doing and how they're doing them in a capital light way with the, um, for example, the joint venture with Realty Income, where they're doing some built to suit built uh, to suit uh, data centers in North America um, for a minimal capital outlay. Um, I mean, I can name a few parts of the bear thesis, but I don't really want to steal Tyler's thunder. So, Tyler, what what makes you kind of hesitant to put this into your portfolio? Yeah. So, actually, I I owned Digital Realty and I sold it. And you know, part of some of the things that uh, Jim Channels had mentioned was part of the reason why I sold it. But a th couple things looked peculiar to me, and and this is where I let I ended up going in this direction is, you know, this was a company for a very very long time, you know, raised this dividend on a, on a pretty consistent basis. But now we've gone close to like eight to nine quarters in a row without a dividend raise. And that kind of like perked up my ears as to why that may be the case. Because like you said, on the business side, it seems like things were just going along as kind of expected. They had made a big acquisition of Taraco, which was a um, uh, African based data center uh, business, had a lot of uh, uh, operations in Nigeria as well as South Africa kind of being the, the data center hubs for the African market. And so I, it looked a little peculiar. It seemed like the business was doing relatively well. And uh, to the debt thing, I'm not as concerned on the re-rating of debt as other companies are because they have international exposure. If you look at where they are able to raise money, they can raise money uh, based in U.S. dollars, based in euro, based in Swiss francs, and they have a lot of access to green bonds, which have been very attractively priced in Europe. Uh, 
basically all of their euro and Swiss franc denominated debt is several percentage points lower than what it can get in the United States today. And so if it does need access to capital, you know, it can just take out Europe, uh, euro denominated or Swiss franc denominated debt, and it's not going to be an issue. The thing that is so, you know, I'm not thinking like, oh, my, my goodness, this company is just going to blow up. It's going to go bankrupt. It's got to restructure on the, on the balance sheet side. Here's where I think things get a little funky. In the first nine months of 2023, uh, the company generated $1.17 billion in operating cash flow. Now, I know it's a REIT. Sometimes they can do some adjustments with funds for operations. But, you know, the cash flow statement in a 10Q is a pretty accurate statement of you know, the cash coming in the door, no matter how you want to adjust it one way or the other. Of, in that same nine month period, it shelled out $1.51 billion just for its dividends alone. So its dividend payments were close to $400 million more than the cash that came in the door. And to fund part of that dividend payment, it issued $1 billion in stock which means that there are more shares that need to get paid out dividends in the coming months. So even though its dividend has been flat, its dividend payments have gone up and they are outpacing its cash coming in the door. So there is a part of me that says, I really think that this company is headed for a dividend cut because the amount of share issuance that it's had and the current dividend payment that it is paying is not covered by its operational cash. Now, I know, like you said, I know there's been a lot of like new businesses coming on and we can say capital light uh, thing, uh, aspects of it coming, but capital light also means you're not taking as much of the profits, you're not taking as much of the cash. And so there's part of me that says, I don't know if this company's current operating business is going to grow fast enough to make up for that cash flow deficit uh, in the next several quarters. You no, know that I mean, all that makes sense to a degree. I, I am a little bit more optimistic than you about the kind of wave of investment they've done over the past couple of years, really going to be starting to be really reflected in the earnings you know, over the next few quarters. Um, it is an expensive stock too. I mean, right. It's, it trades for over 20 times FFO with little growth in the past few years. So there are arguments to be made one way or another. Um, it may have gotten a little bit of, of, you know, growth pulled forward in its stock price due to the AI boom. Um, AI that's, narrative hype. That would hype. definitely be fair to say. Yeah, it's definitely an AI narrative hype stock. Uh, it's an AI adjacent stock, I would call it. Um, and I mean, the reality is a lot of tech companies are investing a lot in building out their AI capabilities, which is a positive catalyst for data centers. It just kind of remains to be seen what a positive catalyst that's going to be. So this is still a big part of my portfolio. I bought shares of this about 10 years ago and have added to it several times since. I don't plan on selling. Uh, Jim Chanos, by the way, did cover his shorts and, and got out of this and you know moved on. Uh, so he's not still saying that, that uh, data centers are his big short idea. But we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out with the AI boom over the next few years and see if it's really if it's worth the hype. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.